Hello everyone, and uh, thank you Christian for the introduction, and thanks for the video. Um, and uh, thanks to Renault Graphic Days for uh, inviting uh, me and my colleague uh, Dan, who's on the picture there, but actually he was sitting, oh he's sitting in the front now, yeah, he moved. Um, we are uh, Studio Spas, a Rotterdam-based uh, graphic design agency, and uh, is this working now? Oh yeah. Um, we, uh, we were found in 2008, right after I graduated from the Willem de Kooning Academy. We both studied uh, illustration at the illustration department and uh, during our studies we um, got more and more involved within uh, graphic design. And um, we uh, work in um, uh, various fields of graphic design, uh, branding for cultural clients as well as uh, museums. Um, we work in a very spatial way, uh, in a way similar to uh, uh, the previous speaker, but um, uh, we, um, uh, well, I'm not going to tell too much about these kind of projects, but uh, it's just to give a quick uh, overview uh, of some of the uh, cultural projects that we do. Um, this was um, for Willem de Kooning Academy. Um, we, um, our name is called Studio Spaß because um, uh, Spaß is a, a German word for fun, and um, uh, we found uh, each other in the way that we love to uh, show the fact that you can have fun within the design process uh, so while making the work and uh, we really hope that uh, we can reflect that to uh, uh, the viewers of, uh, of our work eventually. And um, uh, today we, uh, we would like to... Um, uh Sorry for this slow. Uh, yeah, today we'd, we would really like to focus on um, installations, typography, and interaction with public space, which is a uh, plays an important role uh, within our work. We have multiple paths, as you saw in the previous slides, but uh, today we want to uh, focus uh, on this particular part. And um, I think uh, for us it started uh, back in 2008, uh, right after our, uh, graduation, when one of our professor uh, commissioned us to do a project in his gallery um, called The Ceiling, uh, Het Plafond in Dutch. And um, basically the concept is that um, uh, every artist that gets invited to the space uh, has to make uh, site-specific artwork uh, that um, interacts with the ceiling. And um, uh, we made an installation, it's in a quite residential area in Rotterdam, and we made an installation that uh, draw people's attention with a typographic image on a window um, to uh, get people out of their daily routine and uh, slow down. So it basically was this little message you see here, slow down, uh, uh, we made a, a special typography for it and uh, uh, it was a sticker on the window and if you would look through um, you would uh, see uh, an installation which was uh, a projector sh uh, shining light on a mirror and um, uh, that mirror was under an angle uh, so the light was reflected and uh, was shown uh, onto the ceiling itself. And if you would follow this, uh, um, this light, then you would uh, uh, see this sort of uh, paper explosion, uh, which seemed to be uh, placed or um, uh, put in a position in a very uh, uh, random way. Uh, but uh, actually it was done very precise, so if you would follow the light, uh, you would be uh, uh, rewarded with a secondary uh, typographic image saying no rush on the ceiling and um, in this particular piece uh, we used this projector and um, the projector created some air circulation within the space so actually the um, the uh, typography was slightly moving uh, when um, when it was on so that was a um, kind of a coincidental uh, effect that only appeared uh, because we used these different techniques and uh, we didn't anticipate it on it, but we really liked it and uh, did not try to, uh, to mask it or anything. Uh, so this coincidence plays quite an important role uh, in the type of projects that we do. Um, for example, in this paper cut uh, exhibition that we designed for Graphic Design Festival in Breda in 2010, and um, they wanted uh, us to um, uh, make an exhibition design for uh, people like Lobulo, uh, who are featured in a, a book for, called Papercraft by Gestalten Publishers. And um, when we did some research for this project, we stumbled upon uh, uh, the neighbors of the uh, exhibition space that we were designing for. 
and uh, they um, uh, they appear to be the largest uh, uh, paper collection point for sec uh, for used paper in uh, Europe. And um, we had a quick chat with them, and um, eventually uh, they were really nice gentlemen and uh, wanted to trade uh, a six pack of beer for 20 tons of paper. <laughs> so uh, they came with a truck and uh, brought in a lot of uh, used paper, which we then used uh, uh, to create an exhibition design by stacking layers and layers of paper on top of each other, creating these uh, paper uh, waves that would flow through the space and eventually uh, create sort of tables uh, for uh, the paper craft to be exhibited on. Um, so the next project is uh, Gewoon Hard Knallen. Uh, this was um, an exhibition uh, design or an installation that we made for uh, um, an uh, exhibition space in Rotterdam for contemporary art called Tent. And uh, they had an exhibition on um, the Homo Universalis 2.0, um, uh, which apparently they thought uh, that we were. Uh, it's a, a, a multidisciplinary designer. Uh, and uh, f various artists were asked to uh, uh, create a piece and um, it's quite a big space and for us it was quite a big deal uh, because uh, it was our first time in Rotterdam that we could uh, present our work and uh, present what we did and uh, uh, got the chance to show the people what we would stand for. So uh, we decided to um, uh, uh, really make a statement within, uh, uh, within this space. Um, we uh, got this really big uh, L-spaced, uh, uh, L-formed space, and um, uh, wanted to um, uh, turn it flat again because, uh, as a graphic designer, we uh, we really wanted to uh, ignore ignore the perspective and uh, 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 wanted to speak out uh, uh, our message in a very flat and bold way. Um, so we came up with the idea of creating a, a very big uh, optical illusion um, and. Um, uh, you would only enter to the space through a large corridor uh, and uh, um, the space would only reveal itself at the end of this corridor um, so um, uh, and then it would be very wide so we could not set it up with a projector uh, but instead we used uh, uh, a mold and a, a fixed camera point uh, and uh, work point for point to create this message that we wanted to communicate uh, uh, within this space then uh, um, after this, uh, there were layers of uh, paint that needed to be uh, uh, put on uh, the walls, uh, wood for the floors and uh, some carpet. And um, uh, eventually, uh, after some time, the, uh, the work was finished. Uh, uh, I think it took us two weeks uh, of work uh, every day after our studio work um, in the evening. Uh, because normally they have a technical team that do uh, installations for artists. But when we proposed this idea, they said, uh, we love the idea, but uh, you really have to do it yourselves because our technical team is not going to burn their hands on your installation. Uh, it's too difficult. Um, but they gave us the trust uh, to, to try it, and uh, we were really happy with that. Um, and um, um, so we made this, uh, uh, this installation. It's a really big uh, optical illusion, and it says, um, gewoon hard knallen, um, which basically means, um, or is a rough, can roughly be translated into just play hard. Um, it's what we stand for, like a hands-on approach. Uh, we don't mind to get our hands dirty and do things ourselves. Um, and I think it's also yeah, uh, really a mentality thing. But at the same, uh, uh, in, in the same sentence, we also uh, make a wink to some of our uh, design mentor from the university. Uh, maybe some of you in the crowd know uh, Hard Werken Collective from Rotterdam. Uh, but uh, Rick van Meulen, one of them, uh, was uh, one of our professors. Um, so it was also uh, honoring uh, the older generation and uh, uh, making a statement uh, uh, by a new generation. Um, so this, uh, this piece was up for two months. This is the same work, but then under a different angle. And um, uh, we, um, uh, we had to figure out a way of uh, how to... Uh, um, um how to still have this work after it was torn down. Uh, it, I think the exhibition was up for two months and uh, we, we liked the fact that this was really uh, uh, um, uh, our first big statement in Rotterdam, so we decided to actually make a business card out of it. So uh, 
this was our first moment that we um, uh, actually had a, a sort of chance to create a, a miniature of um, uh, of our own work. Uh, so we made a sort of a, a product after the installation was finished. So um, uh, we shot portraits of ourselves uh, within the installation and uh, uh, when you took the business card off you uh, would actually uh, take our uh, perso personas out of the picture uh, as well. So uh, this was a, a nice way and a new way of uh, thinking for us to um, uh, turn our installations into uh, products. Um, then uh, Museum Rotterdam, I will go maybe a bit quicker through this project, but uh, uh, our city got bombed heavily uh, during the Second World War, so it was uh, reconstructed. Uh, and um, uh, Rotterdam was never a very pop popular city, but now uh, the uh, municipality decided that uh, uh, the city is somehow uh, 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 finished and uh, they were really happy that uh, 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 after 75 years of uh, reconstruction, um, uh, uh, the tourists are now uh, uh, coming to the city and uh, uh, the city is on all the top uh, uh, lists uh, where I think they probably paid for, uh, like uh, 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 these uh, CNN travel guides and that kind of things. Um, and um, uh, uh, Museum Rotterdam, uh, the museum uh, from the municipality, they uh, um, invited us to, um, um, to do an installation uh, to celebrate the 75 years of reconstructing Rotterdam. And, um, one thing uh, that uh, we thought was a really interesting element to use was uh, the um, uh, pile drivers to uh, uh, to drill the big poles for constructing uh, large buildings uh, into the ground. The sound of these machines is like bang, 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 and uh, it's oftenly called uh, the heartbeat of Rotterdam uh, because it was going on for quite a long time uh, all over the city. And um, we decided to, to use this uh, for uh, the installation uh, that we wanted to make. Um, and um, uh, we wanted to make the installation also interactive, uh, so uh, people could uh, could use it uh, um, um, in some sort of way. Um, for the composition uh, and the concept, we were inspired by uh, uh, Fritz Lang's uh, 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 Metropolis, um, and uh, for some uh, input uh, from the collection of the museum, uh, we found different um, memorabilia from uh, 75 years of uh, reconstruction and mostly from uh, the early age of reconstruction. Uh, so um, we decided to use these uh, objects and integrate them within the installation that we eventually made. Um, also we wanted it to be um, interactive in a way that it uh, would be working with light and uh, motion, uh, similar to an equalizer. And, uh, we used this image from 42nd Street uh, because we really liked the uh, collaged layers of uh, moving architecture uh, that create a, a, a really nice layered but still flat image of a, a cityscape. And um, I think most importantly for the composition, we were inspired by this uh, uh, Fortunato de Perro painting. Uh, uh, I think many of you are familiar with this painting. Uh, but uh, we really liked it, and uh, it showed a lot of similarity with uh, how the Rotterdam, uh, how Rotterdam's uh, city is is built. So um, after uh, uh, making uh, maquettes, uh, we could start uh, to uh, construct uh, the installation, and we used a lot of photography that we um, uh, collected through the uh, uh, through the city uh, by making a lot of photographs and uh, close-ups. Uh, but also we went into into the city archive to collect a lot of imagery, uh, which we then used uh, within um, uh, uh, this uh, really big collage that we, uh, we made for the museum. And it turned out to be uh, uh, eventually a, a 14 meter high uh, sculpture, which is a collage, an interactive collage, uh, with um, uh, this pole that you see uh, in the middle. Uh, it's, um, it's this uh, uh, our interpretation of the, the pile driver, so visitors could bang on this pole and by doing so they could measure how uh, Rotterdamish they are. So if you would bang on the first time um, only the light of Rotterdam and the subway uh, uh, logo would lit up. If you bang another time then uh, uh, trains would go driving and uh, uh, the, uh, the, other li the second li layer of lights would go on and then uh, after a third time uh, uh, all the lights would be on and it would be a uh, total bonanza. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was a super fun uh, installation to make uh, and uh, we didn't do this ourselves, uh, uh, the building, of course. Uh, uh, we, 
we know what we like to design, but uh, we cannot build uh, uh, big stuff like this uh, by ourselves. So uh, there was, of course, a, a museum's technical team that was involved to, uh, to create this installation. Um, so another project is the Wereld van Witte de Wit. Um, uh, it is an international art festival that we uh, did uh, the design for for over five years, and we worked a lot with uh, a curator called Lucas Feirais from Berlin, and um, collaborated with him. And each year he would come up come up with a curatorial statement. Uh, and uh, for the 2012 edition, uh, he challenged us. Uh, uh, with his uh, theme uh, and curatorial statement, which, wa which was about uh, the streets, selling the, the streets as a, uh, uh, a super interesting place and one of the last places where people from different social and political backgrounds would meet. And um, um, uh, yeah, he wanted us to do the visual identity for this project. And um, uh, I think this, this uh, uh, may uh, sound familiar for many designers, but uh, Dan and I keep a sort of a bucket list uh, of things and techniques that we like to use. And uh, sometimes a moment comes by uh, where uh, uh, one of these interests that you have uh, can be very helpful. So um, in this case, it was uh, uh, the billboard um, as, a, as a medium. We think it's a very uh, beautiful architectural shape. and. Uh, uh, we really uh, love to do a project with that. And um, uh, at the same time, we were very inspired by uh, the As Arabic Spring, which uh, just happened around the time uh, um, that we were doing this project. Um, on the Tahir Square, each day there were huge crowds and uh, meetups, and uh, this uh, sort of uh, village with messages uh, kept on growing. And um, uh, new sort of signage and protest signs uh, were, were, were happening uh, every day and we saw new imagery. And this really um, triggered our minds like, okay, interesting concept. What if um, billboards uh, can somehow organically grow within public space? And um, uh, how uh, could that affect uh, the design of a billboard? So uh, we start sketching from that. And... Um, uh, that left us uh, to this image. Um, so uh, we tried to come up with a lot of different uh, ways of how we could interact with public space, trees, uh, or uh, uh, show uh, how uh, billboards could organically uh, grow and interact uh, with public space. And um, we proposed this to uh, the curator, and then he was quite happy with it and uh, challenged us with uh, uh, a really nice list of quotes from... Um, uh, artists, philosophers, uh, architects, uh, 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 poets, rappers, uh, people from uh, all different uh, 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 fields. And uh, uh, he had found these uh, really nice quotes which, which were all related to uh, the role of the street and the city. And uh, then uh, collaboratively we um, made a selection of these quotes and tried to implement them in a nice way with these billboards and uh, started to um, uh, uh, find the right places in the right street uh, for this festival. Uh, oh, this is something I didn't mention before, but um, this, um, this art festival is only happening in one street in Rotterdam where all the big museums are. And um, um, with this project, we really wanted to take over the street um, and uh, take the identity of this festival to the street. So it was uh, for us uh, some way uh, the first time to do some sort of a, a city dressing identity uh, where uh, the identity was literally uh, taking place in the street. So um, uh, with a group of uh, carpenters, uh, we built uh, uh, all the sculptures and uh, then uh, afterwards we, uh, we placed them uh, uh, in the streets. And uh, this is the result. Uh, this is a quote by Ringo Starr. We all uh, uh, made um, um, uh, the credits of the quotes uh, on the side of the, uh, the images. So they were really large. I think this one was uh, about uh, four or five meters uh, wide. And it created a, um, um, a really nice uh, sculptural garden uh, with uh, uh, pieces that were really interacting uh, uh, with the people. 
and really felt like a festival identity um, uh, that took over the street at that certain time and uh, was interwoven with the architecture as well. And uh, also for the signage and uh, uh, programming of the festival, we uh, incorporated this visual language and made a translation of it uh, and uh, turned that uh, into a print. Uh, and we didn't want to use uh, a booklet or anything. We uh, basically made a, a, a plain paper A2 sheet and uh, people could tear that off and it was printed on both sides and uh, uh, we left it to the uh, uh, creativeness of the visitors to uh, use it in whatever way they wanted. So this was a new way of looking uh, for us at uh, what uh, a festival manual could be. So uh, when we did this piece in 2012, uh, it got some attention. And um, in 2015 in uh, Seoul, um, there was the Taipo Yanchi International Typography Biennale um, in South Korea. And um, their curatorial statement was quite similar to the one Lucas used with us in 2012. And uh, they were very interested in uh, having a rerun of our project uh, in South Korea. And um, uh, uh, we were super enthusiastic that uh, uh, in South Korea they were interested in our work, of course. Uh, but um, uh, to redo this project is not really the Studio Spa's kind of way of doing it. Uh, uh, but um, uh, so we tried to propose uh, uh, another thing uh, to them um, to uh, not really redo uh, uh, the full scale thing, but uh, bring um, uh, all the sculptures that we had made in a uh, form of a maquette. So what we did is uh, we uh, uh, made scale models of all the, uh, the pieces uh, that we had done and uh, presented those on a, on a table. And um, from there, we um, made a new uh, custom piece, uh, which was site-specific, um, and uh, we used the scale of the sign uh, of the of the scale models uh, to uh, start drawing a new image, uh, which was um, uh, basically a very playful frozen version of uh, the Biennale's logo, um, uh, and uh, it was uh, installed in a way uh, that uh, it was really floating within the space. Um thing I didn't tell, which is quite funny. You see the red circle. Um, that's uh, actually some censoring by the Korean government that happened within our piece. Uh, we were super surprised by it. But uh, it's a quote by uh, a rapper called uh, Cool G Rap. And uh, it should say, uh, the streets where it happened at, the streets where the uh, clapping at, the streets where uh, uh, is where the action's at, the streets where they packing at, the streets where uh, it's cracking at. Um, uh, which obviously has a different meaning uh, than uh, what the Korean government found, but they came to us and said, uh, uh, and Dan, uh, crack may refer to crack cocaine, and uh, you cannot use it within uh, your installation. We have to censor it. So at the last moment, we uh, had to uh, censor this and uh, use <laughs> some uh, newly made stickers to, uh, to uh, censor the work, which was uh, really a new thing for us. But... Uh, uh it, uh, I've, I've, we were happy with uh, the end result anyway. And it was a first chance for us to work with a different uh, script. Uh, uh, of course, Koreans have their own uh, uh, way of writing, Hangul. Uh, and uh, we had only been using Roman before. And it uh, was a really uh, cool uh, uh, chance to work in a bilingual way. So from the poll on, it's all in Hangul. It's the same text, but uh, uh, looks uh, really nice and was fun to use. So, um, last project uh, that I want to show is uh, called uh, Show Me Thing uh, for Kunsthal in Rotterdam. And um, this installation was part of uh, the Do It exhibition. Uh, and Do It is a concept uh, found originally by uh, curator Hans Ulrich Orbist. And um, we, um, um, the concept is basically that he um, uh, invited a lot of artists to make an assignment. And all these assignments uh, start with the word do it and are um, uh, uh, um, um, assignments that visitors has to do something with. And if uh, a venue uses at least 25, or I think, of these uh, assignments, then um, uh, you can organize uh, an exhibition called uh, uh, Do It. And I think oh, uh, in time now, it's the longest running exhi uh, ongoing exhibition concept in the world. Uh, and it came to Rotterdam in 2015, 
and um, uh, Kunsthal decided to uh, um, do their own version of this uh, of this exhibition. So they invited um, Rotterdam-based artists to interpret uh, uh, the uh, the assignments that they were given and uh, create new pieces. And that was the uh, uh, work that would be exhibited in the end. Uh, and we got uh, a do it uh, uh, by minimalist artist called Robert Barry, and um, uh, it was said, uh, it said, uh, do something unique that you and no one else in the world can make, but don't call it art. Uh, and um, this was a quite a tough assignment for us. Uh, we uh, really had to uh, to crack our minds what we wanted to do with this. Uh, and there were two things that uh, remained important. Uh, 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 for us within this uh, this project, and it was uh, uh, the word uh, "do something." So that word "something" was uh, something that we kept on to. And uh, on the other hand, we wanted to somehow um, uh, translate the uh, the assignment that we got uh, that Robert Ge Barry gave us uh, and um, make our translation of it. And um, uh, then we wanted the people that would see our installation, um, um, that they would experience this, uh, 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 that they would experience the same thing that uh, Robert B Barry uh, 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 intended with his sentence. So um, uh, we came up with spacing the word something uh, in a different way, so it become a so me thing, which is uh, uh, can be roughly translated to a so my thing, it's so originally my uh, intended thing. Um, and um, then we made um, uh, we typography uh, we made typography 50 different typography designs uh, for this. And um, uh, uh, once this was done, we stacked them on top of each other and uh, printed them out on very large scale and tiled the design into 144 blocks. Uh, uh, when that was done, um, the piece consisted of. Uh, 7,200 uh, original paper sheets, which all had their own uh, unique piece of design on it, and they were all signed and numbered. Um, so we, uh, uh, yeah, we installed all these blocks, and uh, uh, the piece turned out to look like uh, like this. Uh, maybe uh, uh, people have seen uh, the result of the workshop, but it has a strong relation, of course, with this piece. Um, so uh, when this was done, uh, we basically we made a, a, a grid or a system uh, for uh, the visitors to play with. So uh, once this was up, uh, you as a visitor could uh, come to the piece. Uh, you would make your own decision to uh, make a change within this composition. And um, um, this is the unique action that you only you can do. Uh, so you tear off a piece. It's a very simple uh, uh, way um, uh, and a simple very simple uh, action so uh, it's uh, 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 it's not something very special and it's typography so it's uh, we don't we don't we don't want to call this a piece of art uh, but we really like the fact that it was a, uh, an interactive uh, design and uh, we really like the fact that we created sort of a, a grid of or a system that uh, uh, visitors could play with and we had no control over whatsoever um, and uh, at the same time, uh, the, the, the piece kept on surprising uh, over time. So uh, we would come back every day to uh, the Kunsthal to see what was happening to the typography. And the nice thing was that uh, really what we intended uh, worked really well. So uh, um, the more layers were peeled off, the more change was visible within the design. But um, at the same time, the big message still remained visible. So this gives an impression of... Uh, how it changed over time, and uh, uh, the reactions of the uh, visitors was very nice. Some people uh, immediately walked up to the piece and start tearing off pieces, uh, and some people looked at it for half an hour and then made a very uh, a precise decision to tear off one piece and take it back home with them. Uh, so that was really nice to see as well, and um, uh, a new way of uh, uh, working with such a installation form for us. So that's it. Thank you.